Excuse me, Fatty. You're eating our world. Hey, you're like that rabbit thing from that book about a girl named Alice who goes to Wonderland. What was it called? Oh, yeah. Snow White and Stupid Town. Hello everyone, it is the Almighty Jeff and this is episode 1 of The Simpsons Game. And my god, is this a throwback. Because this is the first game since completing Red Dead Redemption, the original, that I'm playing on the PlayStation 3. And believe me, that son of a bitch got dusty. <laughs> oh my god, I wasn't even sure it was going to work at first. Um, and for a second, it, well not the PS3. But um, since recording Red Dead Redemption, which was in 2016, um, although I might have finished in 2017, I'm not 100% sure, the Undead Nightmare section anyway, um, I've got a new Hallpog. When I say new, I've had this one for about three or four years now. And it didn't work with the PS3 at first, uh, due to the different settings that the PS3 has to the 4 and 5. That means that you can't just use a HDMI cable to the Hallpog and from the to the console, what you can with those two consoles, you've got to basically introduce another like HDMI splitter kind of thing. So apologies that this video is late. Uh, I had to obviously order a new part uh, in the in the time being, but here we are, The Simpsons game, uh, a game that was suggested for me to play when I finished Hit and Run last year, um, one that I was meaning to get round to, but but I had a lot of other games planned, and this was tied for second place on the Patreon poll that I put up and was the shortest of the three, which is why I've decided to go for it first. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Yeah, it was uh, quite the thing, the, the PS3, quite a lot of uh, nostalgia. Uh, booted it up and seeing all my old settings, because like, I learned all my, my old background for a start with the uh, revelations. Yeah, I'm very excited to get into this. I've not played this game in so long. Like, um, could be going on maybe six or seven years now, maybe more than that, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I do love this game quite a lot. Um, I don't love it as much as The Simpsons Hit and Run, and I think that's a viewpoint a lot of people have. I think this one gets overlooked quite a lot. Um, and it is by EA, so you know, typically people don't have a lot of uh, love for EA, myself included. Um, Annoyingly, it doesn't actually tell you the, the the date that you last played the game. Because I was hoping to come up here, and because I was just testing the game to make sure that it worked and everything like that. Uh, just to see when it was I last played it, but this is just showing you on that plural file how much time you spent. So, four and a half hours, about 50% in the game. Um, so, I could just delete that, I suppose. So, yeah. Uh, we are going to be playing, um, at, well, basically in this game there are 16 levels uh, ranging in time, uh, in amount of time it takes to complete. Not typically that long, I don't think any of them are ever going to really pass 30 minutes. Uh, especially in these earlier levels, um, other than me rambling, uh, they're actually going to be quite short. But I'm just going to do a level per episode, making 16 of those. And um, there'll be another section at the end that once we reach to it, I'll be able to explain more. But I think once you start a new game, it just throws you straight into the first chapter. Yes, it does. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to forgive my PS3 stuttering. It's not quite as... Uh, uh, what can I say? I don't know how to explain it, right? <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't run quite as smoothly as the PlayStation 5, let's say. Although it's a lot quieter than the PS4. But anyway, straight into the action. Our boy Homer. Which, this is a reference to one of the... Um, like a segment of one of the earlier episodes. I can't quite remember the one off the top of my head. But I remember that Homer was like a daydream about living in a chocolate world. Right. Excuse me, Fatty. You're eating our world. Hey, you like that rabbit thing from that book about a girl named Alice who goes to Wonderland. What was it called? Oh, yeah. 
Snow White in stupid town. For your information, I am a <laughs> white chocolate rabbit. Hey, white chocolate's not even chocolate. It doesn't even contain cocoa salad. Well, if I'm it's not a misconception, chocolate, white chocolate is in fact chocolate. wouldn't be interested in eating me. Mmm, <laughs> white chocolate. Okay. Maybe you do better in a turn-based RPG. So as you can see, the graphics aren't spectacular. Uh, this was released in 2007, so this was just towards the start of the PlayStation 3's life. Um, to the point that this preceded trophies. So there are actually trophies for this game, although on the Xbox version there are achievements. And the annoying thing about starting a new game is that it turns off your options. So, sorry for the lack of subtitles there, but yeah, it's just awkward in that way. Um... So, yeah, <laughs> this is uh, old Homer. Yes. So, obviously, there's. Um, I should get into pretty big differences when it comes to how you play this game. Because this came out on six consoles the PS3, the Xbox 360, the PS2, the Wii, and the DS. Now the PS3 version and the Xbox 360 version, I'm fairly sure, except for the fact that the Xbox version has got achievements, are exactly the same. So if you're playing this on the PS3 or the Xbox... <laughs> Alright, okay Homer, thanks a lot. Playing this on the PS3 or Xbox 360 should be the same. Very different, although the storyline's generally the same and the same layout of most levels. Uh, the PS2, the PSP and the Wii version are also fairly similar to each other, but different to... PS3 and the Xbox and the DS is its own beast, obviously. I'm just saying that now, just in case people are watching this and playing on the PS2 version, wondering why collectibles are in different places or why there are certain parts of a level that aren't um, in their game but are in this one. Because this one's basically a Simpsons, ga Simpsons game, like, complete edition. Anyway, I've done rambling now. So you get, like, tutorials and stuff like that. I've never seen anyone wet their pants while jumping. Alright, so we got double jump and everything. We've got our, uh, our combat. So, I just want to... I'm hitting select at the moment. Uh, there's your things to do. When you come to this page, you can see the collectibles and cliches. Now, cliches and collectibles are your collectibles of the game. Um, Homer, Barrett, Lisa and Marge all have the unique actual pickup collectibles, of which you can see Homer's are duff caps, and we'll get to some of those in a second. Clichés can be earned by any character and are exclusive to that mission. And I remember this one being a lot easier to get on the PS2 than the PS3, but the cliché for this level is double jump, and you've got to basically keep double jumping for a while, and eventually you'll get the cliché, I think. There you go. Oh, a double jump, that's real original. So, this game, as you will come to see, is very critical of... Well, not critical. It, you can class it as critical or a love letter to... Um, the video game universe, as it is. And it will pay a lot of tribute to several games. Um, and the, the most... Ex uh, in your face way of doing that is the fact that one of the collectibles is cliches of which comic book guy will basically almost make a critique about all the video game cliches. Um, but anyway, yeah, so here's the first Duff Bottle Cap, um, one of five in this one. This is found them all to unlock a trophy, and that's unfortunately not at a, a PlayStation sense trophy, but it, you do. there is an open world to this game. And they have sections where you can view trophies for all your characters if you collect all of the collectibles in a level. This is going to be a lot of an easier thing to explain by looking at it. And um, I'll do that at the end of the episode. So yeah, I wasn't even paying attention there. But yeah, so the Marge Fountains in this level are the respawners. Another thing, but you'd think there'd be a cliche for it, but... Yeah. Anyway, so we've just got number two. One thing that's always bothered to be about this game is the border around the counter thing. It looks so Microsoft Paint. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Alright. Yeah, you're going to occasionally hear my PS3 with the disc. It's just, you know, it's old. 
Thank you, random rabbit. Let's destroy these. I mean, you can basically speed run. There is um, not a collectible, but every you can basically replay levels from the main menu, and when you select a level, it will display a sort of time limit that it wants you to beat. You don't have to do it, obviously. I think there might be an achievement for it on the Xbox version. Uh, I'm not going to show it as part of this Let's Play because it's basically going to end up being like a speedrun of the game. Um, but uh, Separate from that there are a thing called time challenges but I will show you that as we go forward. I think it's this. I know one of the levels of the cake has a dove cap on it. it might be this. Yes it is. See, things might slowly come back to me. Uh, I do have a collectible guide up on my computer just in case. But I think for the most part I should be okay remember where they are. Most of the time they're pretty obvious, but sometimes towards the later levels um, it could be quite a lot more difficult to find. If you can't do the tutorial, you're really in trouble. Oh, okay. I think one of the most underrated things about this game is the soundtrack. I think genuinely, I think this soundtrack's even better than Hit and Runs. I think it's one of the only places that it exceeds that game. Um, the soundtrack to this game is really, really great. And this is just level one. Every level has, like, basically unique music. Okay. Now, what I did there was I did um, a slam. So, basically, I pressed square as I went down. Uh, but what there is, though, is basically there's a giant chocolate head. And if you smash it, then... Um, you can get the duff cap inside, and obviously if we come up here, if the camera doesn't screw me over, you can get the last duff cap. And there, so we got all five, so we've got the Choco Duff Dark, and I'll show you that shortly. But you've got to be quick in this area, because, yeah. I don't know what exactly sets off the end of the chapter, but it happens eventually, so you've got to be quick. Not dreaming, not dreaming, not dreaming, not... What? Damn it, I was dreaming! Why is life so unfair? All I want is the ability to eat everything in sight and turn into a giant ball! Is that too much, Dad? Damn you, reality! Uh-huh. Alright, so there you go, so you can see, so... Our time, which went on a lot longer because I was basically stood around explaining the... basic... like, stuff of the Let's Play. Um... But the target is three minutes, which is very easily doable. Um, I was just rambling a lot through it and taking my time to obviously explain to you guys who might not have played this game before. Um, but yeah, but we're not going to be doing any of those on camera. I might do it in my own time, obviously, but it's basically just replaying the level and trying to do it quicker. There's not much point. But if I'm not mistaken, yes. Uh, so now it takes us into the open world of Springfield. Um, so at the moment we could just play as Homer and Bart. Uh, we will unlock the ability to play as more characters as we go through. But first I'm going to show you the uh, the basic bits of The Simpsons House. I've, this is obviously another step up from Hit and Run is the fact that in Hit and Run the base, the, as far as you could expose the front room for the gag and for occasional missions and that's it. Whereas this is a, you can fully explore even though the camera angles are often really awkward. But um, in every character's room, or in this case for Homer, it's in the garage. Uh, you can view all the trophies, and I believe they're actually displayed as well. So you can see our uh, first collectible here. And then uh, it says at the bottom the actual episode that uh, you need to get all the collectibles for to to earn it. But we've got the Choco Dove Dark from the Land of Chocolate. So there you go. And because this episode's going to be really short, because of how short the level is, I'm going to use this as the one to sort of explain everything else that's going on. So if you come down here, this is where you can select your different outfits that you've unlocked from different episodes. Now, of course, we're not going to have anything for any one at the moment, because we've not seen any variation on the outfits. But you can see you've got Homer's street clothes, Anime Homer, GI Homer, and NeverQuest Homer. You'll see later on in the game, but this is basically the space where you can go to change. And then um, it'll be the same for all our other characters as well. 
But if we could, oh yeah, so. <laughs> I don't know if it says unlock match that into her room is if it's not Holmes' room as well, but. And the same with Lisa there. And uh, here's Bart's. Which is very barren. I think this room is way too big um, to have some little things, but obviously, um, I think Bart's collectibles are posters. Yeah, and they go up all over the wall, so it looks a little less, like, empty in the future, but you'll see things. If we go outside... Two years seems too long for a cell phone play. Uh, this is the Open World Springfield, which is exclusive to... Alright, everyone shut up. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is exclusive to the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions, which at the time was the next-gen versions. Um, throughout the town, as you can see... Um, there are 75 collectibles for all four characters, and I'm going to be saving all of them until the very end of the Let's Play, and the reason why, I'll explain in the future, just so that um, I don't unintentionally spoil something. I, I mean, I see this game's long and old enough that it's not really a spoiler, but just in case. Um, the difference between this version and the PS2 version, that's the one I'm going to mostly reference because that was the only other version that I played. Um, is basically you'd start all your missions from The Simpsons Home, or in case of the future, there is another location where you start missions from, which is also in this game. And you'd basically go to your marker that automatically start the next episode. Whereas in this version, you actually have to go to the location where it starts. But yeah. Anyway, so that's where we'd be going for next episode, uh, for Mission 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to back out to the main menu. Um, and we're going to be doing this after every episode. So this is what the real main menu looks like. This is what you'll see every other time you load in. It's just because the first time you go through, um, it throws you straight into the first mission. So you've got these bonus movies. Those are just trailers, I think. Uh, movies, this will be all the cutscenes that you saw throughout the game, you can rewatch them. Clichés, you can see we've got one of 31, that encompasses all the levels, and also in the open world there are a few as well. Episodes and challenges, so this is where, what we are looking for here. So you can see there are 18, there are 16, and then there's Springfield, and then there's the other location I was talking about. And if you select the mission, you can see we've got Story Replay, which is just Story Replay, and there's a time challenge. Every single regular episode, so not the open world ones, have a time challenge attached to it, which is just basically an extra little task. Uh, we're going to be doing the time challenge after every after we beat the level itself, just because I don't think any of the episodes are going to go on long enough. So I'd rather do them all straight away. Just so um, I don't have to do them all at the end of the Let's Play. So let's just uh, beat the crap out of all these rabbits. We need, need to uh, defeat 100 before the time runs out. Which isn't too hard at all, really. If you'd stop intercepting my combos. Come on. Oh, I have to admit, most of the time challenges are pretty simple or lazy. Some, I mean, some of them are even exact replays of sections in the levels. I just want you to do it in a time limit. Rather than anything new. This is at least somewhat new. And there are some that are actually pretty cool. But most of them are just like, pretty naff. But we'll be doing them anyway, cause I guess you consider it part of the 100%, uh, although I don't think they actually make an impact. I think as long as you complete all the levels, get all the collectibles, you'll reach 100%, but I'm not 100% sure. Come on. There we go. So that's the time travel just done. And again, that would contribute to an achievement if you're playing on Xbox. So, one minute. it says the target. That's literally where the if you don't get it in that time, you'll lose. So... Yeah, I think we've done about everything I want to do for this episode. There will be more things to this game that I will explain as we go through and as we reach them, but without risk of spoiling anything, that's about everything I can cover. So that is where we're going to end it for today. Obviously, this is going to end up being a lot shorter than my usual videos. A lot of them will be. Some of them might even be shorter because I've taken extra time to show you around and see everything as well and obviously explaining stuff. 
So expect shorter episodes than usual. They will start to get longer towards the end of the game, but it is what it is. But I hope you guys enjoyed that, and if you did, be sure to stick around. But for I hope I'm going to take a second to thank my amazing patrons. My five pound patrons are Ever the Snake and Ron Hyler. If you links to their channels as well as my other three pound patrons in the description down below, and on screen also you create my one pound patrons. Thank you so much, everyone. It is truly appreciated, and it goes a long way to help the channel. So I do thank you a lot for that. And if you should become a patron, you can follow the link in the description down below. You don't have to do that because at the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.